cliches and you always assume that, uh, uh, that um, uh, I is, no, let's see which one would be J is bigger than I. So this part of the table. Uh, so this will be all together and many marks here and then many marks here and this is for the first mark where it rages and this is for the second mark. So this is, uh, uh, the total number is O of n squared. So you have to fill a table of quadratic size. Uh, how much does each recursion step cost you in general on average? That's kind of tricky to tell, but you can, the worst case is obviously uh, n, O of n. So the total algorithm will run in time on cube. Um, I'm not sure whether this is the tightest because as you proceed with chopping the sizes, but I think this is correct. It's O of n cube. Brute force, how many possibilities for cutting do you have to consider if there are n marks? n factorial, because any permutation, right? So, and n factorial is gigantic. It's approximately of size n divided by e, where e is uh, approximately 2.7, what was it, 7, 1, and something, to the power n. So it's worse than 2 to the n. This is about uh, 2 to the n log n, right? So, even though it's exhaustive search during the recursion, right, still the resulting algorithm is only cubic while the brute force will cost you uh, more than exponentially many steps to execute. Let me give you, okay, so that's one thing that I wanted to tell you and uh, one of you came up with an extremely clever solution to the tree problem with the removing the edges. And this is the suggestion. So if you have your tree, right, with the costs of each node, of each edges, you simply do the following. Take a super sink, connect all of these guys with the edges of capacity infinity and take, uh, sorry, this is sink, so it's t, and take the root as a source. Now find max flow in this network and then the, uh, find the corresponding mean cut. Obviously t and s will be separated and the cost will be minimal simply because this is the mean cut through the tree. So, of course, uh, the recursion procedure that we did uh, is much faster than uh, a max flow algorithm, right? That tends to be uh, uh, number of vertices uh, uh, cubed. Well, here the number of recursive steps is exactly the number of vertices, right? The number of subproblems is equal to the number, so it's linear. So dynamic programming will run in linear time uh, while uh, max flow in general will run in cubic time. But it's a beautiful idea how to reduce, uh, how to solve problems by different means. Okay. So let's do now this. Assume that you are given a Boolean expression that is built out of truth uh, falsity and uh, say uh, uh, XOR, um, let's see, false, and then here XOR uh, true uh, and uh, uh, whatever, false, uh, and, uh, and then here, okay. So, so it's a sequence of truths and falsities separated with operations. Uh, your goal 
is to count in how many ways you can place the brackets to make a correct expression uh, which uh, evaluates to true. So you are given something that looks like this, probably. Something like that. And you have to count in how many ways you can place brackets so that this expression, the resulting expression, is true. How would you solve this problem? What would be sub-problems? Hmm? So you have a sequence, let's count uh, uh, the, uh, what shall we count? Let's count uh, uh, all the truths or falsities. So this will be one, two, three, somewhere here is I, and somewhere here is uh, end one. What do you suggest to be the sub-problems? Say if the sub-problem is how many ways you can do it uh, on any initial problem uh, up to size, uh, up to uh, position i. How would you then proceed? Well, you will look, just like in cutting sticks, you will look for all possible placement for the major operation, right? You count how many ways you can place brackets here how many ways you can, but do you have this guy? Right, if, you, if your sub-problem is number of uh, uh, placements uh, up, to, uh, up to I, right, if you then number of placements about I, we would like to relate it somehow into number of placements uh, up to k, right, uh, from uh, up to k plus number of placements between uh, uh, k and i. But uh, do we have this if we do it on prefixes of the initial string? Uh, we don't, right? So what do you suggest instead of for every substring up to i, how will you parameterize the sub-problems? You have to generalize them somehow. We have to do it in both, in, uh, we have to make it two-dimensional, right? So the sub-problems will be number of ways to place brackets in on the substring between letters I and J. So, say if it's, uh, uh, so number of ways to place brackets in the sub on the substring between letters I and J inclusively. So if you look, say the height was t, a, a truth, and, and then false, or, and then uh, true, and God knows what, finishing with t, and say this was, so the idea is you look what will the principal uh, operation be, Right, and now both of these will have smaller length, so you will be able to recurse, right? We need to define the space case, but the string is only of length one. Yes, okay, so uh, the base case is easy to handle, right, uh, depending on the, if it's just two letters, if uh, I 
sorry, if j equals i plus 1, then this number i, i plus 1 is uh, clearly equal to what? It depends on what's in between, right? Uh, it's equal to 1 if uh, um, you, you fill it in here. <laughs> if, uh, if, it's, uh, if the middle operation, if the operation between, okay, let's spell it out. Uh, if, uh, 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 say, uh, assignment or the letter, uh, if the symbol, how do you call this, or truth value, is truth value of i is equal to true and truth value of i plus 1 equal uh, to true uh, and uh, uh, operation that is i operation is equal to say conjunction. So in this case you will have one way. Similarly if you will have one uh, if uh, uh, truth value of uh, truth value i uh, equals to true uh, or truth value of i plus 1 equals to true and uh, operation that is uh, the, uh, the i-th operation is disjunction. And you will have 0, for example, uh, if uh, uh, truth value of i uh, is equal to false or truth value of uh, i plus 1 is equal to false and uh, op of i is conjunction. And you have to go through all of the cases. Of course, on, if you have a problem like that on the final, you don't have to spell them out all. You give one example and you say the other values accordingly to the true tables for the operations. So this is if... Uh, um, if these two guys are consecutive. What happens, how do we recurse if they are not consecutive? What is the problem with, say if I have um, exclusive or, what is then uh, the number of uh, so the number uh, how do we call it i so number i k or i j will be some total over all k bigger than i plus one smaller than j, and uh, what comes here? We range over all possible, so these are your substring, uh, sub, this is your substring between uh, i and j, and you consider for every possible position where you will put the pr principal operation, right? And because, and then you simply sum all of these, you total sum of them because for any position, obviously if two positions are different, then the total number of placement will be position with breakpoint here, the principal operation here, plus principal operation here, plus principal operation in all possible cases in between. But what's the problem with this? Say if your k is, k operation, if operation k is equal to exclusive or. Then how do you relate opt, sorry, not opt, but 
number of ways uh, to make things true uh, between i and k and number of ways uh, uh, for i, sorry, for k to j to be true. Ah, so that's the trick. So in this problem, even though you are asked only how many ways you can place brackets to make the expression true, the recursion requires you to actually solve uh, the two problems. For every i and j, you want to determine number of placements that make the expression true, and a number of placements that make the expression false, right? Because when you have, when your central operation is uh, exclusive or, then to make this operation true, you have to make this true and this false, right? So it will be the product of how many ways you can make this true times how many ways you can make this false, plus the number of ways to make this true and this false, right? So this, um, you will have actually, let's call it number of, number of ways uh, to be true of i, j, uh, and number of ways to be false between i and j, and now it's easy to recurse, right? Now you can make the total sum that will uh, depend on what's, uh, what's the principal uh, operation, so. So recursively, you will be computing two functions. So opt, oh sorry, not opt, but uh, uh, number to be true, ij will be given by one recursion and number of placements to make this false will be another recursion, and what will this be? This will be sum over all k that range between i plus 1 and uh, j minus 1, right? So you are looking, if these are your truths and falsities, you are looking for all possible ways to make this whatever true or false, and this whatever true or false, depending on what's in between. So this will be here, it will be sum of, say, if uh, op k is equal to exclusive or, then this factor uh, will be equal to um, then this will be equal to a uh, number of ways to make true uh, between i and k uh, times number of ways to make k plus 1 to j uh, false plus number of ways uh, to make this false times number of ways to make this true. And then uh, you will have if opt is equal to say um, and Right, then you will have uh, uh, four options to make, it, uh, to make it true and one option 
to make it false, right? Um, so what would that be? Let's see. Uh, this will be if left side is true, right? What should the right side be? Anything. So it will be times number of truth assignments for, for k plus 1 uh, j plus number of false assignments k plus 1 uh, j, right? Uh, so now we have to make sure we double count. So it's better. Actually, this is not a good idea to do it this way because the, this will overlap with that. So it's better to put it uh, as four uh, sums. So let me, uh, it's better to put it as four sums. So this will be number of, uh, um, that the first one is true i k times the number that the second one is false k plus 1 j plus number that the first one is true i k times number that this one is also true k plus 1 j plus number of these to be false, i, k, times number of these to be true, k plus 1, j, right? Uh, because uh, you, I was thinking of saying this one is true and the right-hand side can be anything, uh, plus uh, the right-hand side is true, and left-hand side can be anything. So what's wrong with this? Sorry? Okay, why this expression is not good? So why number of ways to make something true can be, is equal to, so number of ways um, to... Exactly. Uh, the number of ways uh, so that i k is true times uh, number of ways uh, that k plus 1 uh, j is true plus number of ways uh, to be false j plus uh, number of ways the second one to be true, so it will be k plus 1 uh, j times, and then arbitrary on the left, number of ways uh, true i k true i k uh, plus number of ways uh, false i k. Why this is an incorrect expression for the number of ways uh, that uh, uh, expression uh, between uh, um, so that the expression uh, expression between uh, i and k uh, and then uh, uh, disjoint with the expression uh, k plus 1 i is equal to true. What's the problem with this way of doing it? We say, okay, if it's a disjunction, one of them has to be true and the other one can be arbitrary, true or false. So here it is. The first one is true, the second one can be whatever you want plus number of ways that the second one is true and the first one can be whatever you want. What's the problem here? We are double counting, right? 
because the uh, situation when this is true and this is true it appears uh, twice. So uh, the summation is not correct. So this is an example. So when I say for dynamic programming, you have to decide what the sub-problems are. And often you have to generalize the problem. So for example, here, we are only interested how many ways to make the expression true. But in order to have a convenient recursion, it turns out that the sub-problem should be the pair, how many ways to make the expression true, and how many ways to make it false. Because the, when you move, uh, when you increase the length of sub-expression, right, depending on what the central operation is, uh, you might have to force one part to be false, and you have to have count of that. Okay, here is another example of similar kind. So assume that you are given a sequence of numbers. So you are given a sequence of numbers with some operations in between. Okay, so say you have something that looks like this. All the numbers are, say, uh, integers. Uh, 1 minus 3 plus 7 times 5 minus uh, 13 times 71 plus and so forth. So you are given a bunch of numbers, uh, x1, and then some operation here. Uh, let's call it op1, then x2, then operation 2, and then x3, then operation 3, x4, all the way to op n minus 1, xn. So operations can be either so op i uh, belongs to the following set, plus, minus, and times. You have to find the placement of brackets so that the resulting expression has maximal possible value. So you are given a string of numbers with some operations in between that can be either plus, minus, or a multiplication. No division, just these three. For your homework, you do the one that also has division. Uh, we can include division. It's, uh... So how would you solve this problem? What will be sub-problems? Because obviously the value depends on the principal operation and the value of the two subterms. Is it enough to just keep track of the maximal value of each substring? What do we need? Both max and the mean. So we find uh, max i, j, and mean i, j, right, by recursion. So what will be max of i, j? What is the recursion? It's max over all k's that are bigger or equal then i plus 1 and smaller than j of, now, here you will have an expression that depends on 
um, uh, if op k is equal to plus, what do I have to take? Exactly. Uh, then, um, then I take here uh, max of uh, um, I k plus max of k plus 1 j. Why? Because a sum is, uh, is monotonic in both operands. I have to maximize this and maximize so both terms to find max. What happens if uh, op of k is equal minus? Exactly, so it will be max of i k minus mean of uh, k plus 1 j. Now, what happens if the operation is multiplication? So what is max uh, i j? Um, so this will be... Uh, uh, will be again. So, if uh, how do I find um, max i j assuming that the break uh, operation is uh, uh, k? So, well, okay, let me write it here. So, if uh, op k is equal to the product, then max i j will be, what do I have to take here for the max? Maximum of max, max, and mean, mean. Hmm? Maximum of max, max, and mean, mean. Exactly. Minus. Well, exactly. So now notice, largest value of the product, to get it, you have to take max of the product of the maxes and the product of the means. Why? Because both means can be negative, right? So they can be very large by absolute value, but negative. So you have to check. So it will be um, max of uh, max uh, i k uh, times uh, max of k plus 1 j, and then the same with mean, because you have to check if, you see, because if you, uh, you it might be possible that, say, you can make both sides large negative numbers, and so the product of the means can be larger than the product of the maxes, depending on the sign. So, I hope you are getting the flavor, right? After all this, going through all these problems, I hope go through them at home. Everything that we have done. Uh, we are not done. We have 15 minutes more. <laughs> you are kind of eager to disappear. Okay, so uh, what is the point? The dynamic programming is really a tricky technique, but the, you get the feeling what you have to do. First, you have to generalize the problem. For example, here, we are looking to, for placement of brackets that maximizes the expression, but in order to have a smooth recursion, you actually need also the mean of uh, subterms. So first, you have to find proper way of, uh, of uh, um, generalizing your problem. Sometimes the tricky part is to find the ordering according to which you will recurse, right? Uh, and usually the recursion is straightforward once you generate uh, the appropriate uh, sub-problems. 
Um, what I want you to show you now is probably one of the trickiest, uh, but we don't have enough time. Problem. Uh, okay, tomorrow we are going to do turtle tower problem. Oh. Now, this problem, the trick how you solve it, uh, almost verbatim with minor kind of adjustment solves the problem of the, on your homework for Cheryl and these rides uh, that uh, you have because both components are the same you have to decide on ordering of the sub-problems and you have to decide what the sub-problems are to allow an easy uh, recursion. Okay, so I guess you are already oversaturated with uh, too many problems. Let's break here and tomorrow we continue, but please do yourself a favor and uh, go through all of the problems once again. Now that you have hints.